Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Karkyu, and today we're going to go over one ultimate tip for every hero. Yes, I'm still milking the idea of the one tip series, but with a little twist on it. Anyways, let's get started. If you activate Diva Self-Destruct on the ground, as in, you don't launch it with your booster jet, you can actually push it by nudging it back and forth to surprise enemies over ledges. For Orisa, a lot of players don't know that you can put down your supercharger and animation cancel it with barrier, halt, and primary fires. There should be minimal downtime when playing Orisa. The third person shield peak is very underused, but can be fantastic for getting sneaky earth shatters off because it will automatically turn Rhine around to the side that you're peeking. You can do this by pressing your primary fire while holding up your shield and turning your crosshair. For console, that would be holding down L2 or left trigger, and then holding down R2 or right trigger while moving your right analog thumbstick. For Roadhog's ultimate, a good tip to remember is that each pellet knocks back an enemy a fixed distance. Therefore, the more pellets that connect on an enemy, the further they'll be pushed back, so use this knowledge to control where you want them to go. The most important tip in understanding how to juggle an enemy in Winston's Primal Rage is controlling your jump pack distance. There is so much to be said about potential Primal Rage damage, juggle combos, double melee techs. This stuff can be explained in a much more in-depth video another time, so for now let me elaborate a little bit more on jump pack distance since it's so essential to using Primal Rage correctly. So first you've got a normal jump the S jump, which is holding S on the keyboard or down on your left analog stick while jumping in order to short jump, and a bunch of other jump trajectories based on where you're looking. Looking up makes you jump high, looking down gives you a fast line drive jump, and anywhere in between is a middle ground. The moment you smack somebody with the melee and primal rage, you have a split second to calculate where they're going to go and to use the correct jump pack to follow them. They can be booped in many different ways, a little bit to the left, the right, really far or really little if they're counter moving or about to hit a wall. So being able to make the correct initial jump decision as often as you can in that small window, along with making split second adjustments, such as 180 degree turns if your jump is too far, is what separates the newbies from the pros. It also appears a lot of great Winston players favor looking downwards to help them control their jump as we continue this old clip from Fate of the LA Valiant. You can also see it from this clip from Fissure back when he was on the LA Gladiators. I know this tip was a lot longer than the others, but I want to leave you off with one more thing. Winston naturally gets an increase of something like 30% base movement speed when he's in Primal. This means your jump pack will feel a bit different in Primal Rage compared to normal jump packs, and you'll find yourself overshooting it more often than not. You've probably noticed it, but couldn't quite put your finger on why it felt so much more difficult to control, so there's your answer. I seriously suggest you go into a custom game, turn on Infinite Primal Rage, and practice on a bot until you get a feel for it. Do it, you'll get a lot better. Anyways, let's move on. For Hammond, his minefield spreads out much more depending on your height. A quick additional combo tip is to ult just before you use your pile driver because as the enemy is caught in the knockup animation, they will likely land on a mine that just got deployed and activated. For Zarya, if you ever have issues aiming your Graviton Surge projectile, a very important tip to remember is that it is the exact same projectile as your secondary fire. So again, if you're not confident in landing your grabs, you can quickly use a secondary fire first as a reference. For Bastion, you can rocket jump by shooting the ground and jumping at the same time to get a better angle for the next shot. Additionally, there is a bit of downtime between each shot so that you can weave in his self-heal, which is highly recommended. For Doomfist, if there are no good opportunities to Meteor Strike into enemies directly, you have the option to ult onto the top of environmental objects and buildings. This can set you up for crazy plays and help you reach targets you otherwise wouldn't be able to reach. The most important tip while using Dragon Blade is to learn the slash and dash animation cancel by slashing, then immediately dashing as soon as the hit marker comes up. Doing this lets you kill 200 HP enemies through Zenyatta's Transcendence when buffed by damage boosting abilities or if they're discorded. For Hanzo, if you activate Storm Arrows before you use Dragon Strike, you can continue shooting them before the dragon is even released. For Junkrat, a good ultimate tip to remember is that Riptire makes less noise when it is stopped against a wall or object and can also give you a third person camera angle to help you decide where to detonate it. For McCree, High Noon always shoots right to left, so if you see a deflecting Genji, just move your crosshairs until he's off the screen to avoid him. 
Maze Ultimate is based on line of sight of Snowball and not necessarily the AoE circle that you see. This means it's a large cylinder, so based off that knowledge, you can strategically place it where enemies on high ground can't peek or else they'll risk being frozen. A good ability cycle for using Rocket Barrage is to Concussive Blast in or silently drop in first, then shoot once, and cancel it with Barrage to squeeze in extra DPS. If you're specifically on Junkertown, Route 66, Volskaya, or anything with a moving platform, uh, these can actually move you while you're in your Rocket Barrage. Not much to say about Reaper's Result except that you can shoot once, then cancel it into Death Blossom for a little extra damage. Try to also move erratically and spam Crouch so you minimize the risk of a headshot. For Soldier, you can animation cancel Tactical Visor with your Biotic Field immediately. Visor also resets your ammo and actually aims your Helix Rocket for you, but won't account for travel time. EMP hacks all health packs near it and can remove all shielding abilities in the game. This means shields from HP, Lucio Sound Barrier, Symmetra's Wall, and can deactivate hero-based turrets like Torp Turret, Sim Turret, and Hammond Mines. Symmetra's Barrier has no limit in range. It stretches across the entire map and can be used on the point from your spawn if your team needs it during an active teamfight. When you respawn, change the orientation and place it down. For Torbjorn, use your instant 300 armor from Molten Core to bait enemies into committing on you, then turn the tables. You can also use the extra tankiness to body block and build up your turret if it's not already set up. For Tracer, you can activate your Pulse Bomb just before blinking into an enemy, so you cancel the arcing animation. This does require an understanding of her blink distance, however. For Widow, I mean, her ultimate is just a press of a button, so the most important tip is actually when to use it for the best value. If you're on attack, use it proactively to help your team engage or secure a pick, and if you're on defense, use it reactively to counter the attacking Widow's ultimate or just before an enemy's engagement. For Ana, since Nano Boost now instantly heals 300 HP, you can use it as a defensive ultimate to help squishy heroes survive certain abilities since it also reduces damage by 50%. For example, if your soldier gets stuck by a Pulse Bomb, you can Nano him and he will live. Using Rally is always situational as Brigitte. You can either use it before a fight so everyone has an extra 100 armor as it will give your team burst damage resistance so it can protect you against Widow headshots or Hanzo headshots. Or you can use it during a team fight for 300 armor over 10 seconds for better sustain and to let your team brawl it out. When activating Lucio's Sound Barrier, try to land it on higher or elevated objects like the payload to activate it a little bit faster. Mercy's Valkyrie is very strong for contesting points since you can activate it and quickly guard an angel to point off a teammate or their dead body out of spawn and take advantage of the vertical contesting height. Whenever you're looking to use your Coalescence as Mora, fire an orb just before ulting because the cooldown of it should just be about ready as soon as your Coalescence expires. And finally, for Zenyatta, you can use your increased movement speed and invincibility during your Transcendence to maneuver around the map along with body blocking enemy ultimates such as Reinhardt Charge, May Icicle, or High Noon. And that's all of them. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm sorry I've been slow on the YouTube uploads over the past three months. Frankly, I'm a bit overwhelmed with sponsored video content over at the Predator Training Room, daily Twitch live streams, and Team Canada World Cup obligations, which, let me remind you, we play September 7th to 9th. Make sure to tune in and cheer for us.